how to cheese the mighty bow feather. So you've decided to become a bow master, or at least flex a little bit with the bow. Great, welcome to the club. One thing you probably want to do right now is get the mighty bow feather that's all the rage amongst the kids these days. But there's one big problem standing in your way. How will I ever clear all these arena quests to get it? The Mighty Bow Feather unlocks that precious level 4 charge on your bow and is part of nearly every build you see online. And in order to craft it, you need all the coins from the first 5 arena quests, which means taking down that pesky Rajang and all his jerk friends. And you have to do it with shitty arena gear. Great. Have no fear, my friends, because I'm about to share with you how to beat every one of these arena quests with the bare minimum effort and learning. And then you'll be on your way to bow hunting glory. First, the good news. Two of the arena quests have an option to use bow. And even if you kind of suck with bow right now, it doesn't require high level skill to beat these guys. And besides, if you're struggling with bow in the arena, you're going to need to learn sometime because that's the whole point of getting the mighty bow feather, right? So let's start with Kulu. For this quest, you're going to pick light bow gun. Don't worry, it's point and shoot. It's a lot like bow, but without having to charge it up. So first, grab your mega spirit bird and jump down to your wire bug. Standard practice in all arena quests. Select exhaust ammo to start and unload it on Kulu's head until you get a KO. If your aim sucks so bad that you don't get one, don't worry. The exhaust builds up and tires him out for later. While he's down, switch to pierce two and unload on his head. When he gets back up, finish out your exhaust ammo, if you have any left, and then switch back to pierce two. Just keep spamming the pierce two until he's dead. That's it. Aim for the head and he will die before you run out of ammo. On the off chance that you suck so bad that you do run out of Pierce 2, well, you can switch to spread ammo to finish him off. If you're just really bad at aiming and can't hit his head, you're going to need more practice. The bow requires just as much accuracy as light bow gun and even sharper reflexes. It's okay. I know you can do it. I believe in you. Next up, Bear off. For this quest, choose Sword and Shield. It may seem counterintuitive, but this is not your grandpa's Sword and Shield. It's an elite weapon now. I told you this was minimal learning, and I meant it. You're going to spam two attacks on this quest. The Shield Bash combo and the Falling Shadow Shield Bash combo. Now don't feel bad about this. This is how self-described elite Sword and Shield users play all the time. So here's how to do the combos. Draw your weapon, press forward toward the monster, and hit A. Then hit A again. Then finally, hit A one more time. High level stuff, right? You can evade after any of these hits, or you can press X plus A to do a big slash. Now, where do you hit this guy? In the tiny T-Rex arms. Don't try for the head. It's low damage, and you're going to hit it on accident enough times for a KO anyway. As you can see in the video, all the hit zones except the arms really suck. I think the tail tip is good, but nobody wants to chase tail. Now, for the second combo, this is a wire bug attack. So face Baroth's big leg, hold left trigger, and press X. This will launch you at his leg, you will automatically do a couple hits. Then when you're up in the air, press A to drop down and do a two hit shield bash for big points. The idea is to bash down through him across his tiny hands. Use this as much as you can, but don't get reckless. So you can see these are easy combos and with even moderate accuracy, you can clear them in five to six minutes. If you need to sharpen, do it just after you evade his charge attack or mud shake or something. The shield bashes keep you from wearing down your blade so quickly. So I only had to sharpen once. Once you're done with bear off, the next two quests are bow quests. The first one is a spread bow. The second one is a pierce bow. They probably did this on purpose, knowing that most people are going to be most comfortable with the wrap it up bow. So this is a chance to get familiar with the spread and pierce play styles. Our third quest is a two monster quest and it's in the flooded forest. This is the spread bow and you get dodge bolt along with it. It's a lot more powerful than you might think at first. You got to stay close to the monster, make sure you've got full charges and take advantage of the dodge bolt. The nice thing about having this quest in a regular map is that you can use all the endemic life and hunter helpers that are here. Go straight for Ludroth first. He dies fast. Enable your close range coatings and save the other coatings for Narg. You'll get the focus shot on this quest, so use it to evade and recharge your stamina. I know everybody tells you to use aerial aim, but focus shot is pretty damn elite. And well, you don't have a choice anyway. You can see my bow skills on this quest are not even close to good, and I'm still clearing Ludroth pretty quickly. When he's done, warp back to the camp nearest Narg and go get him. There's two easy to get hunting helpers that I really like, the Thunder Beetle and the Blast Toad. The Beetle is on a hill near the front of the main camp and the Toad is in a temple not too far away. For this run, I didn't use them because I was trying for S rank. Now, Narg is a tricky character. You're not going to crit on him because his hit zones suck for bow, so just keep hitting him wherever you can. Focus Shot will save your ass and will keep your stamina full. You've got coatings, so use them. Switch to Power Coat when 
when he's disabled, or if you're getting clean, full charge shots, then just spam all your power coats as fast as you can. If you decide to put him to sleep, wake him up with a fully charged dragon piercer the long way through the tail. One last thing, keep spamming that Herculean draw. It's a good habit to get into as a bow user. I almost made S rank on this one, even with my shitty playstyle. On to the fourth quest, Berioth. Yeah, another jerk of a monster. This bow's great for him though because it's pierce, which means you have to keep your distance to get the best damage. And you get charging sidestep, which helps you do that. Now, don't let that name fool you. You're going to use charging sidestep, but you're not going to sidestep to the side. You're going to go forward and backward. Sure, if you're backed against the wall or trying to evade a breath attack, definitely sidestep to the side but primarily use it to manage your distance from Berioth so you maintain critical distance for your pierce shots to be most effective. You'll know you're in critical distance when your reticle is a circle within a circle. Also, going forward and backward makes it easier to keep your aim locked in. Notice again that this is not high level play that you're seeing. I was still able to S rank this quest despite my best efforts to fail. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, that mother freaking Rajang. I've seen people S rank this guy. And well, my melee skills are trash, and I don't want to become a longsword expert just so that I can go on to play the bow in endgame. If you're already an expert in longsword, greatsword, dual blades, or gun lance, then you're done with this video. Nothing I can say will help you beat this quest any faster than you already can. But if you're struggling with any of those weapons, and you just hate this crazy bull monkey, then here's the roughest, simplest, spammiest method I know of to beat the final arena quest to get your coins for your muddy bow feather. If you've got an easier solution, tell me in the comments and I will make a video about it. So without further ado, let's go be mediocre. For this final run, choose Greatsword. All you need to learn about Greatsword is the charged draw attack and the two switch skills they give you here, both of which are very simple and very powerful. The Greatsword build in this quest was designed for the hit and run playstyle. What that means is you run toward Rajang, do a charge draw attack, then you use a switch skill to evade away. One of those switch skills sheaths your weapon and boosts your attack after the evade, and the other has iframes and a counter at the beginning, evades you forward, and then does a big attack at the end. You'll choose one of these switch skills to use depending on where Rajang is after you finish your draw attack. Both of these switch skills only require you to press two buttons, and they're very simple to do. So first things first, the draw attack. Run at Rajang, Press and hold X. This will draw your sword and you'll stand there charging up the attack. Release X to perform the attack. Do this a couple times to get used to it. You have three charge levels and an overcharge level. You want to release on the third vibration and not wait any longer, otherwise you'll do an overcharge and it will only hit as strong as a level two charge. So release after the third flash or vibration that you see or feel. If you can't wait that long, that's okay. Release it as soon as you need to based on what Rajang is doing. Any damage is better than no damage. Now after you release your attack, you can evade to the side and sheathe your weapon, which honestly, Rajang doesn't give you a lot of chances to do. So that's where the switch skills come in. The first one is power sheath. That's left trigger plus A. Use this to evade in any direction, left, right, forward, or back. It automatically sheathes your weapon. Then you simply run at Rajang and perform your next charge draw attack. Pretty freaking simple. You're not going to S rank this quest this way, but we're not here to S rank it, are we? We're here to win. The second switch skill you use is similar, only it doesn't attack at the end. This one is left trigger plus X. It gives you invincibility at the very beginning, launches you forward, and does an overhead slash at the end. You can use this to close distance or as a way to get the hell out of there. So that's it. That is your cheese. It's not fancy cheese, more like some store brand Velveeta knockoff cheese. I'll give you one last tip for using Greatsword, just so you don't think the weapon sucks. While you're charging up your attack, if Rajang does something stupid and you feel in danger, you can, while still holding X, press the A button. This is the tackle move. It sends you forward and gives you iframes. You can follow it up by pressing and holding X again to charge, or pressing A to do a jumping spin attack, or just press left trigger plus A to to do the power sheath and get the hell out of there. You can tackle through a good deal of his attacks if you get the timing right. If you don't wanna mess around with it, don't worry about it. Stick to the hit and run, stay safe, and eventually this monkey will be dead. As for positioning tips, one really cool thing is that you can stand right in front of his face and charge up while he's doing his breath attack. When his arms are glowing red, you're going to bounce, so try to avoid those. 
His tail is surprisingly a good place to hit and works great if you don't have time to get around to his front. And finally, if you're at distance and about to be hit by a breath attack, you will have to evade. It's too wide of an attack to simply run to the side. I've done this quest a few times now with Greatsword. I had to do it twice to get all the coins I needed, and I'm starting to really like the weapon, but I'll save those thoughts for another video. I hope this video helps you feel more confident about getting your mighty bow feather and encourages you to start your journey to bow user greatness. It's a ton of fun, and I want to help as many people get there as I can. Let me know in the comments how well you do with Rajang or any of these other quests, and share your tips. Also, if you could be any type of cheese, which would you be? Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Lots more cool videos on the way.